Well, good morning and welcome to 50 Days to Your Pentecost. It is day 24. We're almost halfway through the journey and I'm with Craig Broker. Craig, uh, my wife, Anne, and your wife, Anne, we've known one another for over, over 20 years. And, yep. and I, I, you know, I love telling people that here's this, what we said then was, you know, we were two white middle-aged guys, but but we will always be middle-aged. We're not anything beyond middle-aged now. But but uh, you were this guy who who was filled with the Holy Spirit, and you would end up just starting to sing a spontaneous song uh, in a meeting. There could be a couple thousand people there, and you would start singing a spontaneous song, like a river bubbling out of you. But as a white guy, you did it in rap. Now, please, can <laughs> I, you know, like I really opened this up right out of the gate. How, how does this work, a white guy doing rap and doing it well? In those meetings, you remember David with David Damien, um, he would pretty much open it up for the flow of the spirit. So David was really good that way at, uh, okay, you know, who's got something? And <clears throat> if you remember, we would go up to him and we would say, you know, I think I've got something. And of course, my gift works uh, best with music. So right. we would be going along and the, and the singers would be singing and playing, the band would be playing, the dancers would be dancing. And we're all sort of saying, okay, Lord, what do you want to do next? And so in that atmosphere, uh, I would start to get songs. And so I think the first couple of times I went up to David and I said, uh, you know, I think I've got something. Um, he kind of looked at me like, okay, <laughs> what is it and, and i said well it's kind of funky uh, it's kind of like you know kind of hip and kind of <clears throat> and he kind of was like uh <laughs> and so so he took a chance you know and he hands me the mic and i go up and and because we'd done it in the church a number of times and because i'd done it in other meetings and i was i was traveling full time at that time uh yeah. and be, because of that um there was a, a flow that began and for me it it, it comes out in rap yeah, which is really funny because you know I never listened to rap. I actually don't really like rap. To me, it doesn't require. Well, and and let, let's not forget, you live skill. in Cal you live in Calgary, Alberta. You would come on the stage to rap, and you were wearing cowboy boots. <laughs> well, I wasn't. I didn't wear cowboy boots because they hurt my feet. But I am from Cowtown in Calgary, so there's a lot more redneck than there is rap or in me but i tell people you know i got white skin but i got black blood man i mean get down you know we got it coming <laughs> that's good so so everybody today's scripture uh, uh literally says in john 37 or 7 37 it says jesus stood and said in a loud voice let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink whoever believes in me the scripture says uh rivers of living water will flow from you so I, I was just praying this morning, and, and I, I looked up that scripture in the Passion Translation, and Craig and I both jumped immediately because we're, it's one of our favorite translations these days. But just listen to what this says in the Passion Translation. Believe in me so that rivers of living water will burst out from within you flowing from your innermost being, like the scripture says, Jesus was prophesying about the Holy Spirit that believers were being prepared to receive. Craig, these days, these 50 days of toward your Pentecost, these are the days of preparation. These are the days where this increase of the bursting forth of Holy Spirit is upon us. Now, uh, I started right out of the gate with you uh, singing these spontaneous songs that would just rise up in you as Holy Spirit would be moving. But but life wasn't always like that. You 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 know your your growing up days. You you grew up in church, but then you know sort of moved away from that. And why don't you just tell us? Give us the, give us the thumbnail sketch of of Craig and and meeting Anne and all of that. Sure. Yeah, I grew up in Calgary. Uh, my family, we went to a little evangelical church. Uh, I'm the last of four children. Um, my parents got divorced when I was about 12 or 13, which in our little church, you know, divorce was kind of like the unpardonable sin. They didn't really know what to do. My parents were leaders in the church. My mom was the piano player. And um, 
my dad was a, a guitar player. Yeah. And it was only probably six people that, that were involved in the band in the, the whole church. You know, back in those yeah. days, you just had basically an organ or a piano, yeah. which is what my mom played. Um, and dad would do specials with his guitar once in a while. So when they got divorced, we were, you know, we left the church, which was fine with me because I didn't have to dress up in those horrible tight clothes with a tie on every week. At 13 years of age, I got to go out and play with my friends. Uh, and how old are you, Craig? <laughs> Old enough to, to have been doing this. I for, remember that. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, uh, you know, in, I was on the other side of the world. I was traveling in Europe uh, with a buddy of mine. Uh, I was a good Canadian heathen. I had hair down to the middle of my back. Um, you know, I was into all the things that booze and girls and drugs and everything else. And uh, loved to travel. So we were traveling. Well, we were traveling. I was staying uh, with a, uh, cousins. Cousins were missionaries. They said, okay, you can stay with us for free but you have to go to church. And right. I was like, Oh, no problem. I've been to church. While I was at that church one Sunday in the back of this little church, the guy speaking Spanish. And uh, so I just suddenly the Lord convicted me, which I didn't know that's what it was. Uh, and I just said, I said, God, if you're really there, whatever's supposed to happen in my life, here I am. So wow. whatever you want to do, do it. And, and I actually finished by, by saying, if nothing happens, I'll never pray again. And it wasn't arrogant and it wasn't, you know, I just, I just was like, okay, what do we do now? Mm. Uh, and so my buddy and I split up. Uh, I remember going over to Italy and I had started reading the Bible because my cousins gave me a Bible. And for the first time in my life, it was coming alive. I remember wow. laying down one night, starting to read. And I thought, well, I'll read for 15 minutes before I go to sleep. And uh, uh, three hours later, I looked over at the clock and I was like, what just happened? I've been reading for, because it was coming alive. Yeah. So God began to get me, uh, but then jumping ahead a little bit to maybe what's a little bit more relevant to what we're talking about here, I, I ended up in Athens in Greece, and on the way over in the ferry, my Bible, uh, my little bag that I had the Bible in got stolen. So I had to go get a new Bible. So I looked on the, the youth hostel, and there was a little card that said Crossroads Christian Center. So I went over there, and it was a little uh, church that uh, was an American expat who was there, and he invited me to come back to the service on Sunday. Well, I went back there and it was a Pentecostal church, scared the bejabbers out of me because <laughs> I went into the church and I'm sitting halfway back and everybody comes in and fills in the room. And the pastor says, well, why don't we stand together and let's all pray? Well, I'm a good Baptist, right? So I bowed my head like this and all these people around me start going, and I thought, oh my God, it's a cult, it's a cult, it's a cult. It scared me. I was like, what's going, but I couldn't get out because there was this big black lady right beside me. And I thought, man, if I, if I, if I try and say, excuse me, she goes, sit down, boy. I mean, I just, so, I was, so it sounds like, I was stuck. it sounds like Jehovah sneaky to me. It was totally Jehovah <laughs> sneaky. They had a special speaker that week. He had a uh, altar call for people to get filled with the Holy spirit. I did not go up in the altar call. I was standing in my chair, but the Holy spirit came on me. I started to cry. When the pastor and the special speaker saw that this new guy was crying and you got to remember i'm scraggy looking i got holes in my jeans and that's back when you didn't pay for the holes that's when they right. were old right <laughs> they came over and they laid hands on me and they just started and i felt something coming up on the inside and it was literally i could feel it coming up closer and closer to my mouth and i was like whoa what's happening and then out of my mouth goes and I, and I knew about that because I'd heard my mom say that she'd experienced that. Wow. But, but it was funny was then they both said, glory to God, he got it. And they walked away. And I'm like, what did you just do to me? What did I, I am with this thing coming out. And I don't even know what to do with it. <laughs> but this that was is my exactly, introduction. This is exactly what we just read. Believe in me. So that rivers of yeah. life. Oh, it was a river. It, it was like, yeah. And the pastor was very good because he sat with me afterwards. He said, now, let me tell you what happened to you tonight. And he gave me three or four scriptures. And he said this, he said, the, the, these thoughts are going to come to your mind. He said, you're going to wake up in the morning and these thoughts are going to come to your mind. Oh, what an idiot I made of myself. Oh, I was making all of that up. Oh, what was I doing? And he gave me the best advice. And I've given this advice to hundreds of people since he gave me three scriptures. And he said, when that happens, he said, you open your Bible and you look at these scriptures and you read out. And one of them was John seven. You read out, out of your belly, shall flow rivers of living water, but this spake he of the Holy Spirit. 
Wow. And, it, it, and, and I woke up in the morning. The first thought that came to me was, oh, what an idiot I made of myself. And then the second thought was, wait a minute, the pastor talked about this. And going right back to the Bible, and then he gave me 1 Corinthians 14, that, it, you know, he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Yes. And I just took, read those, the other scripture, the three scriptures out, and I said, no, I believe what happened was God. I don't care what I feel like or what I think. And that was my, the beginning of my journey, my own Pentecost, where I experienced something that changed, radically changed me. Now, it, it, you know, two, two things that I just, I, I, I want to touch on. First of all, did you notice that when you quoted the scripture that the pastor gave you, you went back to King James and, and it was beautiful. It had rhyme with it. But, but, you know, secondly, did this happen for you in the 1970s? When did it happen? 1981. Okay. All right. You know, there was a, there was a period of time <clears throat> around the world where this outpouring was taking place mm. in the most unusual and unexpected locations. And there was a grace uh, right across the, the denominational spectrum where Holy Spirit was just falling on people yeah. and they were being filled. And this river of life, rivers of life were just bursting out of them. They weren't, they weren't the trained pastors necessarily. They were people like you, you know, hitchhiking around Spain. They were people like me. Uh, I ended up hitchhiking from Ontario out to, to Alberta. God was just filling people. And I want to suggest to those watching, we're telling an old story for our lives, but but that story is a faithful story. It's a it's a story of of ever present being filled. Craig, you, you're not yeah. just describing what happened when you were in Europe. It's something that that this this flow, yeah. you, you talked about the difference between the well and the river. That that's a perfect illustration for folks right now. Yeah. And even with what you're saying there, we um God God got a bunch of our generation. There was a bunch of people that are our age that it's like God said, I need these guys because I need fathers in the nation later on. And I talk to guys that are you're in my age across the spectrum and say, when, when did you get saved? When did you meet Jesus? Oh, I had this encounter in 1976. Oh, I had this encounter in 1979, 1981. I said, were, were you going to church? No, no, not really. Just uh, sort of had something happen, you know, that was really, I thought, whoa, God's really there. They get saved. They get filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, so there was, I think God was getting us ready, but again, to your other thought there, Jesus said something interesting to the, the woman at the well, you know, he said, she says, give me this water that I may drink. And Jesus says to her, the water that I give will be a well of water or a fountain of water. Passion translation says, springing up into everlasting life. And I remember seeing years ago, you know, when you get born again, which I got born again at seven years of age, I remember distinctly giving my heart to Jesus and having an encounter where things went from dark to light. It just, it was, I was seven years old. I was sitting in Sunday school and the teacher is over there and she's talking about something to do with, you know, Jesus. And we had one of those felt boards, you know, that they used to yeah. stick things up on. <clears throat> and and I, in the middle of her talking, all of a sudden, I'm, everything in front of me went black and it wasn't in my eyes, but it was in, and I thought, I need to ask Jesus into my heart. This is really important. I don't even remember what she was talking about. And I said, dear Jesus, come into my heart. Cause we grew up in church, right? That's what we were yeah. taught. Come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. And instantly the fearfulness and the blackness went away and everything was okay. And I was like, whoa. And the Lord brought me back to that when I came back to him at 19 years of age. Cause I, I said, when were the times that you, you intruded into my life? And the first one he brought was that's when you went from darkness to light. That's when your, your yeah. spirit it went from innocence to um, being aware of sin to getting saved. Incredibly important for people to have their kids in Sunday school. Incredibly important. Yeah. And anyways, that was that well of water. And all through my life, I'm hanging out with friends. I'm hanging out with guys that are doing drugs, even sometimes people that were mean people. And always something inside would say, this person is not safe to be with. This is a dangerous situation. And I never knew, or they'd be mean to each other. And I, I'm trying not to digress, but but just to show the, the, yeah. the evolution here. Yeah. Um, and and my heart would would say, 
I remember when we won the, the uh, Alberta championship in soccer, we played division one soccer. And I remember walking off the field and thinking, okay, is that it? Like that was, and, uh, and it, I was convicted immediately. And I said to God, I said, I know you're there. I know Jesus died for my sins. And uh, I know that when I die, I'll go to heaven. And I wasn't living for God. So the well of water was something, you know, when you have a well, yes. you have to let the bucket down and you have to wind the bucket up. And then you've got to carry the bucket into the house and pour it into your water things. And depending on how much water you want, it's how many buckets you got to get. But, but what you said earlier, Jesus said, uh, that he that believes on me, a river of water yeah. will burst forth. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit in that little church in Athens, Greece, it was like somebody took the well and just exploded it into a river. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, you know, when you've got a river on your property, all you have to do is take a pipe and stick it in the river and the force of the water will bring it uh, right into your house. So the difference for me from being saved and knowing what was right and wrong um, and then being filled with the Holy Spirit for the first time, I was able easily to do what I knew I should do. Mm -hmm. Right. That was the power of the river. And yeah. that, that for me was different. That, that got me off drugs. I was having more, more high times in the presence of God that was better than drugs. And I said, well, shoot, what do I need drugs for? Yeah. If God, you know, I make the joke, that's why we call God the most high. <laughs> wow. Because his, his presence is better than anything else, right? <laughs> um, David you know, said, in your presence is fullness of joy. I, I, I want to go back and, and touch on this moment in Sunday school where you knew you needed to give your life to Jesus. It didn't matter what was going on around you. But this, th because I want to speak to moms and dads right now about your, your children. Um, your children hear the voice of God. And, and they, they might experience God differently than you did. But, but they are hearing the voice of God encourage them encourage them not always is is a, a seven-year-old ready just to to be apprehended by the lord but encourage them that they are hearing the voice of god that was holy spirit coming all over you and and bringing you to a point of incredible shift in your life i remember uh, you know my mom and dad were charismatic uh for for a few years uh, and, and I thought it was nice for them. You know, they seemed to be always praying and they, they seemed to be singing more and, and, and that was okay, but, but it just seemed a little weird. I grew up in the United Church. And, uh, but then I, I ended up meeting a couple of my buddies. I had moved to a new town and, and they invited me to this, to this Bible study, this, uh, well, I was, I was overwhelmed. I mean, we were we would worship and and sing for like an hour and a half and but there was something that was taking place and that's why i love long services today but there was there was something that took place on the inside of me and and for me there was no nobody laid a hand on me nobody did anything in the process of me being filled with holy spirit i was actually sitting in the back seat of a you won't some of you won't even know what this is but a Datsun B210 right 1977 god literally apprehends my heart and all of a sudden there is a flow out of my being now the way craig and i are describing it isn't the way that you will necessarily experience it and and we want to be very clear father is unlimited in how he will bring the fullness of his spirit to you. But in these days, as we are pushing toward a fuller life of spirit-led, spirit-followed, spirit-empowered lives, I want you to know that, that the fire hose of God is, is waiting, waiting to be plugged in, is waiting to be uh, let loose in you. And I think, I think it's important that we touch on the, the idea that that this is for our everyday life. This isn't for our religious uh, checkbox. This is for our everyday life, whether you're in the grocery store, whether you're, you're at, at the gas station, where, wherever you are, 
Craig, I, can you speak to, to anything along this line? Yeah, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that the, the pastor told me after that was he said, you, you've got a new language. He said that language bypasses your intellect that allows you to pray the things of God directly into your own life um, and without knowing exactly what to pray. And I didn't know the scriptures. I didn't know, you know, Romans 8, 26, that likewise, the spirit also helps our inabilities for we know not what to pray for as we ought, um, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. Um, and that literally in, in the Greek, it implies in, in your known language or the language that you've learned. So um, for us, for me, uh, I started to pray in tongues. Like I just prayed in, in tongues enough to get used to it. And I still tell people to this day, you know, as we pray for, I'm going to be speaking on this in Pentecost Sunday coming up when it is, but telling people you should be able to speak in English and you should be able to flip the switch and go back to English, you know, thank God summer's coming, go back into tongues. Because the spirit realm is our native realm, right? Yes. And so people think that it's some kind of a sort of a weird, spooky thing. You and I both had a, a form of encounter, but let me just say that of the thousands and thousands of people that I prayed for over the years, because this is one of my favorite things. When, whenever I preach in a church or do like a conference, you know, three or four services, I will always have one service where we minister specifically on Holy Spirit to get people filled with the Holy Spirit because it was such a transformative thing for me. Yeah. And, and without exaggerating, I would say that 75% of the people that receive, receive by faith and speak by faith. Yes. If there's, if there's a 500 gigawatt anointing in the room, people receive much easier because their brain is not so engaged. But, but most people receive by faith. And I literally tell them, I say, you know what? Holy Spirit doesn't speak in tongues. You do. He won't without you, and you can't without him. But the combination of those two, we get saved by faith. Why wouldn't we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in a new language by faith? And that was a, that was a key that I found over the last 30 years in helping people to receive the Holy Spirit, have their own Pentecost, have a brand new language. And, and back to what you originally asked me, I still pray in tongues more than I pray in English. Right. Because and tongues flows. Now, and, and let me let me add something to that. Go ahead. I've I've learned, you know, the Bible says um, that you pray. He that prays in unknown tongues uh, speaks unto God, and nobody understands him. Well, that means us too. People think, yeah. well, this, I get asked this all the time. Should I understand what I'm praying? And I say, no. I said, well, what about tongues and interpretation? Don't worry about that yet. Tongues and interpretation is a different. It's a gift that you you can learn to develop. But your praying in tongues is your own prayer language just for you, between you and God. So in, in telling people that, I'll, I'll say to them, you know what, don't worry about understanding it, just let the river flow. Yeah. Like it talks about there in the Passion Translation, let it, let it burst forth, get used to it. And then, then what happens, and this is what I started to say, is that you can pray specifically, Lord, I pick up my marriage right now. Mm -hmm. And I pray for my marriage in the spirit. Lord, I pick up our finances. And so you can, you can pick things up with your heart and it's a learned thing to grab something with your spirit and mm -hmm. say, God, I'm praying over this situation right now. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, if you'll pray in tongues for an hour a day for 30 days on, on, on any situation in your life, almost without fail, you can solve that problem. Yeah. Like it's, it's crazy. Well, you know, and, and what the passion says at the end of this verse is that, that, that the Holy Spirit had not yet been poured out uh, because Jesus had not been unveiled in his full splendor. But now, this, this filling of the Holy Spirit, we, we've, we've, we've talked about this incredible evidence of, of speaking in tongues, but the signs and the wonders, the, the full splendor, the mysteries of God, are unfolded in our lives. For me, I, I, you know, some people would say, Michael, you're so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good, but, but I, I am one of those ones that, that I pray in the spirit, you know, I'll be walking around the house, and, and my wife will say, would you say, I said, oh, I, I was just praying in the spirit, and it's sort of like, but it's a part of who I am, and, and it can be a part of who you are. It's not something that you just put on, 
when you are getting ready to be a part of a service, but, but let it flow. It is, it is a, a river that is flowing through you. And yeah. for some, for some, you might not have experienced that before. And, and as we're, you know, we're getting closer to, to the end of, of our time together, Craig, I want us just to pray that the flow of Holy Spirit, this, this living water would burst, would burst the dams. You know, for some, they've got, they've got apprehension. They've got, they've got questions. God will answer the questions, but, but when we yield to, to the flow, something transformative, literally transform my life. The day yeah. that this happened for me, it was February 1977. I'll never forget it. It has been a mark of who I have been for yeah. my entire adult life. Not, not to be religious, but to be filled with the Spirit of God so that in any and every situation, I had this confidence that, that I could pray. And, and it, I wouldn't know what an answer would be, but I could pray and God would come through. And it's yeah. not always, it's not always easy. It's not always what we expect, but it is always faithful. Well, and prayer is always a labor, right? It, it's nice when the juice comes in the Holy Spirit and away you go and pray. But uh, for most of us, our prayer life is like Jesus going into the wilderness. It says he often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. And I think that's, a, that's significant of our prayer life is, is it's a dry place. It's, we're so busy. There's so many other things to do to withdraw into that place where we really need God. I mean, let's face it, it's a hard thing, but to the degree that we don't pray is the degree that we're saying, Lord, I really don't need you. Yeah. I can do this, you know? And so us praying helps. Just a thought on what you said there. If people have questions about this, we have just, this is one of my favorite subjects in all that I, just one of my favorite things. Um, so we have extensive teaching on this, everything from, from how to receive, is it God's will for everybody to get it? How do I know if I got it? How do I know if it's really tongues? What actually happens when I pray in tongues? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so if people want that, and they, they go to timesofrefreshing.ca, um, there's that they can pick out different parts of that. And I'm not trying to sell tapes. No. I don't even care about that anymore. I'm not trying to sell CDs. We sell enough as it is. Um, but, but the teaching is what helps people to step into it and, and walk in what you said, where it becomes sort of normal, where you get used to it. It's not weird. It's not spooky. It's part of who I am as a spiritual being. And it's, it's yeah, we just want to help people. And, and Craig, Craig, I so appreciate that. We'll make sure that we put that, that website, timesofrefreshing.ca. We'll, we'll put that on the, uh, the link with the YouTube also so that Right. And you know what? It's times of refreshing.com. Sorry. Dot com, I'm, not CA. Scrolling. Yeah. Dot com. Okay. Dot com. And, and Craig, uh, you know, the, what I love about being with you is that, you know, we can be joking around, um, really having a lot of fun. Uh, we get a few of us together. We'll have a barbecue. We'll have a dinner. We'll just have dessert. And, and we can be just having let regular normal fun like we don't have to be talking about work you know church work but then in a moment we can have a flow of spirit of god that just comes and refreshes each of us you are a refreshing uh, man of god in my life it is just a joy so so folks uh today we we for some of you we might we might have been you might have thought that we were being on the wild side but that's where the river flows and and i i don't want you to to think you have to to jump through a hoop to to experience what god has for you he is ready to meet you where you are right now all i ask that you would say as you're on this journey Holy Spirit, I'm available. I am here. I, I let down all of my guards, all of my preconceived ideas, all of my bias. And I say, Holy Spirit, would you do what only you can do? Tell him you want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. Yeah. Yeah. Just pray it, Craig. Thank you. Father, we just thank you right now. You you always have more. Holy Spirit, it's like when you said to me here a couple of years back, 
do you have enough Holy Spirit? Do you have all you want? And I thought, oh my goodness, no, Lord, there's so much more. Don't, I pray for everyone that's watching this. I pray for those who are watching it later in the name of Jesus yeah. for a hunger that rises up, a hunger that says, God, I know there's more. I want more. Fill me, show me, take me deeper. We're asking you, Lord, for yeah. more of your presence, for more of your power, and for more Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I, I constantly pray the same type of prayer. Now, uh, Craig, uh, you and Ann, uh, we're going to be getting together for a barbecue. Now, we talked about this earlier, but we're going to wait until we know spring is really here. Yeah, until it's not snowing anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had snow yesterday, but, but we're, we're going to have you guys over again. We love doing that. Tomorrow, uh, our good friend, uh, Lauren Locke, from Johannesburg, South Africa, is going to be with us. You will not want to miss this woman. Uh, she has a broadcast uh, radio and TV background. She grew up in church, but, but she just has such a sweetness about her. And twice this week, we're going to have uh, uh, a father and son who are walking together as kingdom uh, spirit-filled people who, who are saying the generations need to walk together. So, so on the 12th, uh, Jess and Moses Sao from Taiwan will be with us. And then on, on Saturday, uh, Papa Gideon Chu and his son Caleb, who are from Vancouver, originally from Hong Kong, they will be with us. They're going to be just sharing how we walk together as the generations. Craig, you and your, your boys, your daughter, you walk together, you're, you're serving together, you do life together. It is, this is probably one of the greatest joys of our lives, walking together, the spirit-filled life. So folks, thanks. Please, uh, if you've got questions, you can reach us at admin at cfyc.org. Share this Facebook post with others, uh, like the Facebook, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and thanks for joining us as we challenge you on these 50 days to your Pentecost. Have a great day. God bless. We love you all. Bye-bye.